It's fascinating when something that should be really simple turns out to have a wide variety of complex aspects. Today I'm going to talk about AES 50 and pops and drops. AES 50 is usually rated at 100 meters, sometimes less, as its maximum length. Now, AES-50 protocol is used on Behringer X32, Midas M32, and all the stage racks that go with it, as well as the wing and other Midas Pro series consoles. And it is an amazing protocol. It has an extremely low latency of 68 microseconds. That's 0.068 milliseconds not even 0.1 milliseconds, which is great. In contrast, there's a downside. No good deed goes unpunished. And with AES-50, in order to get that super low latency, when something goes wrong, it does not fix it very well. It drops out, you get silence, which is the rock show equivalent of a complete meltdown. The worst thing that can happen other than something involving fire and explosions. Also, you've got pops. It'll boom, pow, exploding sound. So it'll sound like you have fire and explosions. You've got this interconnect that's connecting all of your inputs to your stage box, to your console. Everything goes silent or everything explodes when AES-50 has a fault. The AES-50 protocol is based on Super Mac, which was developed by Sony. And Sony licensed it to Midas, who put it in their consoles. They wanted a really low latency protocol to interconnect. Behringer buys Midas. Behringer puts AES-50 Super Mac into their consoles as this high quality interconnect. This is rated at 100 meters. That's the spec. That's as far as it's supposed to go. So they rate their consoles and their racks, everything at 100 meters. And then they make a cable that's 100 meters long that you can connect things together. Well, it turns out that AES-50 is vulnerable and susceptible to ESD, electrostatic discharge. So if you're on a carpet or in a very dry environment, maybe at a balloon farm full of sheep, and you have sparks when you touch anything, well, that electrostatic discharge causes AES-50 to fault. And what does the fault do? Pops and drops that shuts down your shows. So to deal with ESD, electrostatic discharge, they respect the cable to be shielded in order to reduce the vulnerability. And now you gotta go buy shielded 100 meter cable that may or may not work. And the current state of affairs for using these things is 80 meters is about the most you can really count on as being stable. But this is just a, all willy-nilly at this point. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to determine whether or not your cable is right on the verge or completely stable in order to not have these pops and drops, as well as show you a cable I'm working on that will solve it completely and do well over 100 meters stable every time. Now there are other ways to go about this rather than trying to find a cable that works at 100 meters plus in a stable and reliable way, like the Clark Technic DN9620, which allows you to convert to fiber and go up to 500 meters. And since we're all excited about getting another pair of dongles and some wall warts to go with it to connect up to our gear, that would be a really good option, especially if you need to go farther. But if you only need to go 100 meters or 110, 120 meters, maybe that extra dongle does not excite you as much as it could. Another possibility is to get AVB or Dante running and convert and then convert back. And there you've got your extra latency, your added complexity, and your ease of plug and play use to instantly have things work has now gone away. If you do want that super simple plug it in and have it go scenario and no extra stuff, the 100 meter cable that's stable may seem like an enticing way to go. Now with rigging, when we have chain motors that lift 
a ton, well, they'll pick up 2,000 pounds or 2,200 pounds, and yet they're rated at something more. If you put 2,400 pounds, they don't move. They don't just break and drop out of the sky, catastrophic failure. They're rated at some amount over their max capacity. It puzzles me why someone would spec a console or an interconnect system at 100 meters maximum, and at that 100 meters maximum, it goes into catastrophic failure, if it even can do 100 meters, which it doesn't reliably on many cables. So the roads, the various cables that we get, some may work, some may not. But the consequence is tremendous. It's a showstopper. This to me is unacceptable thinking for interconnecting audio gear for the business that we're in. Let's take a different approach or let's apply some extra parameters. So what I'm going to do, test some cables and we're going to extend them to the point of failure and come up with a good idea of how much over the maximum that we're going to use it, this cable needs to be capable of in order for it to be considered a reliable cable at that shorter distance. Now to do this, I've got a multi-track, 32 tracks going into this X32, and I'm sending 16 outputs of the X32. It'll be going through AES50 to the S32, and then out of the S32, I've got the outputs bridged back in to the inputs of the S32 and running those back. Now I'm using the Behringer version instead of the Midas M32 or the newer wing because I figure this is worst case scenario. This is the cheapest and oldest of the boards and racks. If it works with this, it's going to work better on the newer stuff and the higher quality stuff. Let's see how far we can get AES-50 to pipe through CAT cable. The CAT cable that I'll be using here, I'm working with our manufacturer that makes the SuperCAT and SuperCAT sound cables to make a cable that is extremely high frequency capable and extremely low loss, such that it is optimized for this and also flexible. There's another dynamic too. The cables that work best for AES-50, what they recommend for extra long lengths is solid conductor wires. If you have a portable sound system, the last thing you want is a convoluted slinky to wind at 2 a.m. during load out. We need something that winds well, that's reliable, and works every time for these interconnects and is durable. All right, so let's get to it. I got a 50 foot piece of shielded cat 5e cable that i'll plug into the s32 and plug into the x32 and uh, this is simple aes 50 over it there's our multi-track using 16 outs bridged back in to 32 ins coming back the other way. It works fine with 50 feet. So if I plug in a 100 meter piece of cat cable, let's see what happens. There it is. Hear that pop? That's coming through these little wedges. That's a sonic boom coming through a big PA. This is a nightmare. 100 meter cable, it does not like a hundred meter piece of shielded cat five. All right, let's see what happens with a hundred meters of this cable that I have been working with sound tools manufacturer on. Beefy stuff, but that's what I had to do in order to get this thing to work. Cool, let's turn that down a little bit. And we've got 100 meters working. Now I'm going to take this reel and I'm going to set it down alongside me and let's put some more length and see how far we can go. So let's go ahead and add a 25 foot section and go to 353 feet. Also, these are really cool. These Cat6 couplers from Neutrik are much nicer than the other couplers. They're rubber housed, they're higher resolution. Um, they don't have straight wires. If you open up one of those other ones, 
there's actually straight wires. You have all this time and energy money spent on twisted perfect pairs. And then in here, it all goes to garbage. So using these is the way to go. So we'll plug that in. And also they got a really cool locking where you can push a button on the side, it unlocks both at once. All right, 108 meters. I'll just go ahead and leave the music going. Let's go longer. And we will grab a 16 meter piece. It's about 50 feet. Stable, let's see if we can go farther. 24 meters. Start this on. Stable. Let's go up to 32 meters. That means that we're gonna be 130% of the rated spec. About 433 feet total. Four hundred and thirty-three feet. All right, so let's go ahead and add that eight meter piece back on. Let's see if we can get to a hundred and forty meters. Plug that in here and this in here. All my connections are good. I can already hear it without even firing it up. I can hear it's losing connection. Okay, so that's too much. We can't go 140 meters with this cable and two connectors. Imagine your show doing this. That would be horrific. All right, let's go ahead and go back down to 130 meters. So even with the inferior um, Neutrik coupler, we're still good. If you want to make sure your show is stable, extend your cables out, find out where they fail, and make sure you have a good buffer zone. You don't want to have to just add a little tiny piece and have it drop out. Find out where it fails, find out your buffer zone, find out your safety margin, as we do for anything that's show critical or life critical. Let me know what you think about this cable I've been working on. This is what I've come up with. It's good to 130 meters, and I would say usable to 120 meters, or 110 if you want to be really safe, but it is crazy stable at 100 meters. We can go 30% over. Yes, and I know the cables are coiled up. We could run them out straight, but we're 30% over. Coils are worse, even though with twisted shielded pairs as this is, with an overall shield, this is double shielded, the coil should make absolutely no difference, but we have a 30 meter buffer. This thing is crazy stable, and the coil, if there's gonna be problems, it's gonna be caused by the coil, and the way we would solve the problem is running it out straight. Maybe running it out straight will get us even farther. That would be an interesting test for another day, and thank you for joining. All right, it's finally here, the new SuperCat XM cable. This will run AES-50, guaranteed 110 meters, and we'll be releasing it in 100 meter lengths and 10 meter lengths because we need to go to 11 and show that that 100 meter limit is not a problem, and this will actually run at 130 meters. Polyurethane jacketed, Cat 6A grade, and it'll be priced between the SuperCat sound and Super Cat cables from Sound Tools. We made it in red so you can tell which cable is safe to run a long distance X32, M32, or any Midas AES 50 or other long distance overruns.